Hey there, welcome back. In case we haven't met yet, my name is B, and I love to code the heck out of Squarespace and teach other designers how to do it too. Today we're going to be dealing with something very similar to what we tackled in a previous video. Last time, we changed the number of thumbnails per row on mobile for blog pages in 7.1. But this time, we're going to be doing the same thing for portfolio pages. Now, the process to tackle this is pretty much the same thing, but I'm going to be showing you the exact selector that you need to use to be able to target portfolio pages instead of blog pages. So if you'd like to have control over how many thumbnails per row show up on tablets and on mobile, keep on watching so that you can learn how to make that happen. Okay, so here we are on a portfolio page inside 7.1, and I just wanna show you the type of portfolio layout that I'm using here. So we're going to be tackling the grid simple layout and also the grid overlay. So right now I'm working with the grid simple. We're gonna start with this one, and then we're going to make the slight modification needed for the same code to work for the grid overlay. So here, basically what we need to do in order to modify how this looks on mobile is to first see how the section has been built. So this is pretty much the same structure that Squarespace is using for blog pages in 7.1 as well. So if we take a look here, we can see that this is the whole section holding the portfolio area. And then within this section, we have a section border container and the content wrapper as usual with all of the sections in 7.1. And then if we open the content wrapper container, we can see that there is a content container, which is again, pretty general for all sections in 7.1. And then here we have a different container that is called grit thumbs and has a couple of classes. And here is where the actual layout of the portfolio page is taking place. So if I stand over this, you're going to see that this sort of turns on a couple of other sort of highlighted areas in here that are turned to purple. And then if we take a quick look here inside the HTML, you can see that this has a little grid label applied. So whenever you see an element inside the HTML, inside the inspect element tool that has this grid label, that means that grid CSS has been applied to that container. And therefore all of the things that are within this container are set within the grid that has been created through this parent container. So if we open this up, you're going to see that directly within this container, we have each of the different portfolio thumbnails in here. And so basically this parent container for all of these grid items, is creating the rows and the columns for all of these elements to sit in. So if we take a look now to the right side, you're going to see that within these snippets that we have here, there is one where we have the display grid applied and also the grid template columns property that creates the grid where all of the elements are going to be sitting in. So if we alter the grid, that is going to alter the placement of the items within that grid. So here you can see that this one has been set to repeat for min max zero one F bar. So repeat four basically is just repeating the same thing four times. Now the thing that is repeating four times is this min max zero one FR. So this whole value in here is basically setting the width for each of the columns. And then the min max just refers to the minimum value that those columns should have and the maximum value that they can have. So here, basically the zero is just letting the browser know that the columns can be as small as zero pixels and they can go all the way up to one FR. So one FR stands for one fraction of the space. So basically the width of the columns here can go from zero to one fraction of the space. And if that's repeated four times, that means that we have four equally wide columns created. So if we want to alter the number of columns for a particular breakpoint, what we can do is basically reuse the value that we see here for the same property, but then change the number of times that this repeats itself. So instead of creating four equally white columns, we can create three equally white columns, two equally white columns, depending on how many columns or how many thumbnails per row you want to have for that specific device size. So let's go ahead and set everything up. First, I'm going to go ahead and create a media query. So to be able to create a media query, I want to look at when I want that media query to apply. So I'm just going to go ahead and start shrinking down my screen. And then here, I'm just going to look at the little value that shows up in here. And just in case you don't know how to find that, if you open your inspect element tool and just leave it in the background, 
once you start shrinking down your screen, you're going to be able to see these two values. The first one corresponds to the width of the browser and the second one to the height of the browser. So basically what I'm looking for is a number here for the width of the browser. So that way I know at which particular viewport width I want to have the number of thumbnails per row change to a different number. So let's go ahead and decide here. So I think these look really good, but I think that maybe around 1400 would be a good idea to change this from four to three. So that's the breakpoint that I'm going to be choosing. 1400, let's go ahead and do that here, media screen and max width, 1400 pixels, all right. And so basically what we're going to do here is now go back into our grid and then we're going to target it the same way that Squarespace is targeting it in here. So I'm going to grab that class of portfolio grid basic. You're going to see that that class belongs to this container that we're targeting, the one that has been set to grid. You can see the class over here. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the whole declaration here because I want to reuse that, but I'm just going to change the number from four to three. Now, one thing to keep in mind about using these type of functions, so these are called functions where you have like a little keyword here and then you have the value in between um, parentheses. So this is basically a CSS function. And so when you are working with functions in here, sort of like repeat or calc or anything like that, if you're applying that function inside the custom CSS window, sometimes it's necessary to escape the value in order for the browser to translate it correctly. Because you're going to see that right now, if I leave that as it is, and then I shrink down to that 1400 or something lower, nothing is really going to happen. And the problem is that if we take a look at the right side here, we're going to see that snippet that I just created inside the custom CSS window, but it's being crossed off. And then if I send over this little warning sign that we have in here, you're going to see that this says invalid property value. And that is because since I didn't really escape that value in there, and I'm not really going to get into details of why that's necessary. Um, but the problem is that because I didn't really do that, then this is adding an extra space between this one and this S F R that is just that doesn't really translate into anything. So anyway, my point here is that if we're going to be using that function in our customization, we need to escape the value by adding the little tilde sign. And then we're going to add a couple of quotes surrounding the whole value like so. And that is just going to help the browser translate that value correctly. And now if we take a look at that 1400 pixel breakpoint, you're going to see how now we have three thumbnails per row instead of four. Now let's go ahead and continue shrinking things down to see if we want to create another media query. I feel like here at this point, this is just not looking right, especially because the text is all the way down here and looks a little bit too big. And I feel it's too narrow if we have three thumbnails per row instead of two. So I think I'm going to shrink that down to two. So let's go ahead and choose another breakpoint. I think I'm going to be using 800 which is pretty much the Heather breakpoint here for um, 7.1. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to copy all of this because we're going to be doing the exact same thing, but at a, a different breakpoint. So I'm going to use here 800 pixels. And now I'm going to change this number of repeat from three to two because I just want to have two thumbnails per row from zero pixels, like the viewport width of zero pixels, all the way up to 800 pixels. And then from this point onwards until 1400 pixels, I'm going to have three thumbnails per row. And then from 1400 all the way up to really large devices, I'm just going to keep the same setting that I have chosen within my section, which is four thumbnails per row. So now if we save this and then we take a quick look here and we start shrinking things down, you can see how now at 1400, this goes down to three thumbnails per row. And then at 800, we have this in two thumbnails per row. All right, and now let's go ahead and open this up so that we can see what modification we need to make in order to make this work with the other layout that we have in here for the portfolio page. So that would be Right now we were working with grid simple. So now we're going to work with grid overlay. You're going to see that if I apply the grid overlay here, 
And then if we take a look at the screen sizes here, nothing is really changing. And the problem, I mean, this is just the original breakpoint that Squarespace is using to set everything inside a column. But basically R3 and R2 thumbnail per row customization is not really applying. And the reason for that is because the class that the whole grid container has, the container that we've been editing to be able to change the number of thumbnails per row, that container has a different class depending on the type of layout that we're using. So here, if we take a look, at the same container that we've been working before, you can see how now this one has a class of portfolio grid overlay, while the other one that we were using, the grid simple one, has a class of portfolio grid basic. So basically what we need to do is match the selector that we have in our code to the one that this grid is currently using to be able to use the exact same code as before because the structure is exactly the same. The process that this uses to set the grid in the first place is exactly the same. You can see here on the right side that we have grid template columns, repeat four, min, max, zero, one, and far. So it's exactly the same value, this same method that Squarespace is using to create the grid for this um, overlay portfolio layout. But the only difference is that this container is called differently than the one that we were using before. So if I now go and select this class and swap that in here and in here, and we save that, you're going to see that now, if I shrink down my screen at 1400, now we get three thumbnails per row. And then if I keep going down, we get two thumbnails per row all the way down to very small screens. And that's it. That's everything that you need to do to be able to alter the layout of portfolio pages on smaller devices. If you found this tutorial helpful, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on future content, and I will see you next time.